Hey guys, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you so much for being here. I am all cozy, snug in my bed tonight, and I am going to be watching the best years of our lives. This one has been suggested by actually a lot of people for about a year. I didn't include it in the Veterans Day poll this year because I knew I was going to watch it in November. So I think this movie is from the 40s. I also think it's about the First World War. I know it won like a lot of awards at like the Oscars. I've heard there's a love story. So I am looking forward to this one. It comes highly praised and one of those ones that's been on my short list for a long time. So remember, here is my Patreon. We have a wonderful, funny, kind community over there of movie lovers and friends. You could also help me out by liking and subscribing and hit that little bell if you want to be notified when we release new videos. We're doing three a week most weeks and we always live premiere and live chat those. Okay, now let's watch the show. very loud. Okay, hold on. Every time someone mentioned the best years of our lives, I kept singing in my head, do, 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 do. It's gonna be the best year of our lives. Who sings that? Oh, black and white. Have you got anything going to Boone City? Your name, please? Derry. We could probably get you on flight 37 on the 19th. Well, see, listen, I can't wait that long. I just got back from overseas and I want to get home. You might try the ATC, Captain. Where are they? Out the terminal to your right and across the field. Thanks. What's ATC? A different airline? Oh, air transport command. Sorry, what's the chances of a ride to Boone City? I haven't got anything right now, but if you want to fill this out, I'll call you. Where's Boone City? I need a couple of men to give me a hand with this out to a plane. What's the matter, sailor? Tired or something? Oh, phew. I thought he had no legs, and he said that to him. You Derry? Yeah. Parish? Right. This is a B-17 taking off for Boone City. Did you get there tomorrow afternoon? That suit you? Sure, that's swell. Sign here. Sure is great to be going home. Here you go, sailor. Sign in it. That'll... I'll do it for you. What's the matter? Think I can't spell my own name? You better hurry up out there, because she's taking off soon. Right, thanks. Come on, sailor. Oh. Where about do you live in, Boone? You know what Jackson High is? Sure. They're gonna be friends, right? My name's Fred Derry. Al Stevens. And this is Homer... You from Boone, too? Yeah, I sure am. Come on, let's sit up in the radio compartment and we'll get in the nose and get a nice view of the good old USA. Uh, okay? On, wow. I would not want to fly in that. Is this your first ride in one of these things? This is my first plane ride. I was on a CV. But I never knew things look so pretty from up here. This used to be my office. Bombardier, weren't you? Yeah, spent a lot of time on my knees up there. He was a bombardier? Bomb, 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 bombardier. Yeah, I've got a match, Captain. I'm actually really impressed with his dexterity of that. Should we smoke on planes? Anybody superstitious? No, no, go I ahead. Am. I am. You're only supposed to light two cigarettes for one match or something? When we were sunk, all I know is there was a lot of fire, and I was burned. When I came to, I was on a cruiser. My hands were off. <gasps> After that, I had it easy. But what, sailor? Well, you see, I've got a girl. She knows what happened to you, doesn't she? She'll still love you. What's your girl's name, Homer? Wilma. Homer and Wilma. Ooh. She's never seen anything like these hooks. Where do I get home and tell the folks about this trip? I'm the first one in my family that ever rode in an aeroplane. He's a sweet guy. An aeroplane. You married, Al? Yep. How long? 20 years. We didn't even have 20 days before I went over. Married a girl I met when I was in training in Texas. Oh, well, now you and your wife will have a chance to get acquainted. <laughs> For some reason, I thought Al this whole time was flying the plane, and I was feeling concerned that he was being so chill. This Jackson High football field. Boy, I sure would like to have a dollar for every forward pass I threw down there. <laughs> the glory days, Homer. I never knew there were so many planes. And they're junking them. But we could have done with those in 43. Why would they be junking them? proud of them. It's so old school. I love it. Have you ever been to Butch's place? No. Butch Engel that runs it. He's my uncle. Swell guy. That's the best joint in town. We'll have to get together there sometimes. Swell. Let's bring back Swell. This is my street. I wonder if Wilma's home. I really want to hug him. How about the three of us going back to Butch's place? We'll have a couple of drinks and then we can go home. You're home now, kid. 
Where next? Just a minute, bud. Oh man. These reuniting videos are instant tears. Okay, let's go. Is it the next turn up here? The next turn on the left. Why don't we drop you first? No, you're next. And we're not going back to Butch's for a drink either. They're all so nervous. Some barracks you got here. Hey, what are you, a retired bootlegger? Nothing as dignified as that. I'm a banker. How much do I owe you? Take your hand out of your pocket, Sergeant. You're outranked. <laughs> I love the captain immediately. Oh my gosh. How long has it been? Oh, this must be so surreal. Where's mom? Good teenagers. They didn't have their dad for a while. I guess I'd better call the Kenworthys and tell them we won't be over this evening. My son and my daughter. I don't recognize you. What's happened? Just a few years of normal growth, don't you, Fru? I don't know yet. Gotta have more time to get to know you. I'm terribly sorry that we can't be over. My husband. He's home. Freddy! Oh, well that's... played. Dad, it's Freddy. He's home again. Glad to see you, my boy. Where's Marie? Well, she's not living with us anymore, Freddie. She took an apartment downtown. It was kind of inconvenient for Marie living in this place after she took that job. She took a job? Where? Some nightclub. I don't know just which one. But there's nothing to worry about, Freddie. Marie's fine. We saw her last, last Christmas. Last Christmas? Do you mind if I leave my stuff here? I'll be back. Glad to have you home, my boy. It's good to be home, Pop. Bye. Say, you were at Hiroshima, weren't you, Dad? Did you happen to notice uh, any of the effects of radioactivity on the people who survived? Wait, this is World War II. Can I finish the dishes? Is this the maid's night out? Our maid took a night out three years ago, and we haven't seen her since. I took a course in domestic science. <laughs> she took a course in domestic science. Why don't you sit down and relax? I'm perfectly relaxed standing up. Is such a thing as a drink in this house? I'll see. You'd think this would be glorious. Giving us some warning he was going to get here today. Don't worry, Mom. I mean, so that we could have gotten in some supplies or things. She's kind of nervous. I got a wonderful idea. Let's go out on the town, the three of us. I've been in jungles and around savages so long, I, I gotta find out I'm back in civilization. He's gonna go to that place that Homer mentioned, isn't he? Oh, they're bar hopping, okay. I've got a light, Mr. Cameron. No, that's all right, uh, got it. Why are they all being so awkward? Have you thought anything about getting a job, Homer? You might think about my business, Homer. Insurance. We've taken on a number of veterans. They make very good salesmen, you know. Men who have suffered from some kind of disability. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mom. There's another one for you, Homer. Wilma will hold it for you. I think I'll go out and walk around a bit. Oh, they're making it weird. It doesn't have to be weird. I get that it's a big change, but not really. Home we ought to be. Home, <laughs> Don't you think it's time to go home to bed and get some sleep? First, you're gonna stop and have one last little drink. Come on in, driver. Come on in, driver, he says. <laughs> Butches, that's the one. Homer, it's good to see you oh, again. Oh. Your friend the captain here told me you were home. Hiya, you captain! Hiya, you again. <laughs> so you took my advice and came to Butches. Oh, boy. Gang's all here. What do you have? How many times have I dreamed of hearing that question? You know, Fred, before I went in the Navy, Butch would never let me drink any liquor. The way he talked about Butch, the whole family looks down on him. I thought he would be some, like, trashy. He's, like, the most respectable-looking man I've ever seen. What did you leave out? He's home in a swanky apartment house in town. We'll never see him again. Hey, that's out! <laughs> Gang's all here. <laughs> Look how happy he is. Hey, Millie, Peggy, stop up and meet the gang. Meet the gang. Oh, this is my Uncle Butch. Oh, I hear you got a new neon sign, huh? Now the party can really get started, eh? Billy, come on, sit right here. Here's a good booth. Al, take Millie home. Show her that you missed her. Telephone, Butch. Give them anything they want. Any kind of beer. Homer. Okay, Butch. Gee, Butch, it's swell to hear you playing again. The littlest things must just feel like such a joy after you get home. Wilma phoned. What made you leave the house and get them all worried? Well, they keep staring at these hooks, or, or else they, they keep staring away from me. Take Pop, for instance. He was cleaning his pipe, and all of a sudden he got conscious that he had hands, and I didn't, and he tried to hide his hands like he was guilty or something. <gasps> oh. Give them time, kid. They'll catch on. You know your folks will get used to you, and you'll get used to them. Then everything will settle down nicely. That was wise. That was special. <laughs> <laughs> Al cracks me up. 
shall we, Dad? Well, that's a charming idea. You remember this too? Oh, this is sweet. Look at the tear in her eye. <gasps> so you're Al's daughter. Yes, I've been that as long as I can remember. You don't seem like Al's daughter. Careful, mister. What did you say your name was? Peggy. My name's Fred. How do you do? <gasps> oh, look at him. <laughs> Bouncing her around so serious. Why don't you call your wife? I don't know her number. Good night, everybody. I'm going home. Butch says I've got it. Where, where are we going next? Oh, pal, oh, pal. Follow me, old pal. Lights out. Is it, Fred? It looks like it. Is this where his wife's supposed to be? We better wait and see if he gets in. He's going to show up at six in the morning or whatever in the morning it is. Do we know? Okay. I love these girls. They're just like nonchalant, like, yeah, we've done this before. We'll take care of you, these men. She's very nice. Oh, I want someone to tuck me in. <laughs> I wonder if she's mad at him. The first night back, getting so wasted. <gasps> Peggy gave Fred her bed. Get out of there. Way to ruin the sweet moment, Al. Oh, he's sweating. Oh, poor Fred. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, Peggy. She's so kind and sweet and tender and nurturing and... His wife better be nice. Because I love her. Uh, I know. You're about to say, where am I? I'll tell you later, Fred. You can sleep as long as you want. I want someone to say that to me. <laughs> you can sleep as long as you want. Rob, you better hurry up. You'll be late for school. Holy Moses. <laughs> Holy Moses. She's fixing you breakfast, sir. Hello. Hello. You're Peggy, aren't you? For the last time, yes. Sleep all right? Wonderful. Good. She's nice to pretend that didn't happen. I must have got pretty plastered last night. They said plaster back then? You married, Peggy? No. Why not? I guess the best of them are already married. <gasps> oh, she's flirting with them. I've got to get downtown. Maybe now I can get into that apartment house where my wife lives. I'll drive you, Fred. I've got to get to work at the hospital. Thanks a lot for everything. Goodbye. What'd you do before the war, Fred? Soda jerk. What do you think you'll do now? I don't know, just what I will do. I guess after all the places you've been, Boone City looks pretty dreary to you. No, it'd be the not opposite. Not from where I'm sitting right now. It's not just a line. I really meant it. They're flirting with each other. Didn't think you'd be up for hours. I dreamt I was home. Am I really home? Looks like it. Rob's gone to school and Peggy's driving downtown with Fred. Oh, oh yeah, Fred. He's a great guy. Good times. Good times with Fred. Last night. You get her, Al. About that dream I had last night, you were very kind. You didn't even mention it this morning. As a matter of fact, you've been swell about everything. I think they ought to put you in mass production. Oh, she's been swell as right. Do we like Marie? All right, all right. Ready? Hiya, babe. <laughs> They say babe back then? Well, when I got in yesterday, I went over to Pop's house first. Yesterday? And... Why didn't well, you? Well, I came here, but it was too late. You'd already gone to work. I went from uh... one nightclub to another. I was looking for my wife. Oh, you found her now. Okay, I think I like her. I wonder how Fred's getting along. It isn't easy for those Air Force glamour boys when they get grounded. <laughs> Air Force glamour boy. Look at my pants. Because you no idea what the war did to my waistline. <laughs> Milton at the bank. That's his job, right? I'll certainly drop in. Is he gonna go back to working right away? You don't seem very happy about it. I can't help thinking about the other guys. Oh, why are they the cutest thing I've ever seen? Oh. Didn't this used to be Bullard's drugstore? It was taken over last year by the Midway chain. But old Mr. Bullard's still here in charge of prescriptions. Thanks. Oh, it's good to see you oh, again. It's good to see you. <laughs> I'd like to have you meet our new manager, Mr. Thorpe. We might be able to provide an opening for you as an assistant to Mr. Merkel, the floor manager. At what salary? Thirty-two fifty per week. I used to make over four hundred dollars a month in the Air Force. I think I'll look around, Mr. Thorpe. Thank you. Take care of that cold. Does he really have a cold, or is he snorting Vicks? We want you back here with us, Al. What would you say to being vice president in charge of small loans? 
It involves us in consideration of all kinds of loans to ex-servicemen. Do you want them to give the loans or deny them? I thought of taking it easy for a while. After what you've been through, you need a vacation. This contains reports with all the figures on our small loans department. It'll give you the whole picture. Well, while you're resting, just read thousands of papers about small loans. You shouldn't have. Holy smoke, honey. That's the first time I've ever seen you in civilian clothes. From now on, honey, you're not going to see me in anything else. I'd like to introduce you to the gang. They've heard me talk so much about you. Oh, Freddy, when do we go out tonight? Will you wear the uniform? Well, seeing as oh. it's you. But it's the last time. <laughs> Won't you wear the uniform? Now you got to get yourself some new clothes. That suit's awful. I know a place we can get some snappy suits, meat, order. Oh, you can get a lot of things if you know the right people. And if you don't care how much you spend. I got money. Cash money. I got cash money, baby. Baby. Come on, let's go out and have fun. He does look handsome. Homer. Have you seen Homer? He's out in the woodshed. I wish there was something I knew to do for him. He just keeps to himself all the time. Oh, I just want to give Homer a big hug. Hello, Wilma. Hello. No, hi, babe. He seemed like when he was on the plane and stuff home with the boys, like he didn't even care about his hands. He was just like, yeah, I'm awesome at them. You wrote me that... When you got home, you and I were going to be married. Things are different now. All Homer. I know is I was in love with you when you left, and I'm in love with you now. Other things may have changed, but that hasn't. <gasps> you want to see how the hooks work? You want to see the freak? I'll show you. Take a good look. I just do anything for me. I'm sorry, Noella. Oh, this is breaking my heart. They probably just wanted to see him with his girlfriend, but he automatically thought it was because of his hooks. I'll be alright. I just gotta work it out myself. Couldn't I? No, I gotta do it myself. Don't push her away. Oh, I think he's putting that on himself, that everyone's scared of his hooks or thinks he's a freak or weird. Okay, Pop, I'm going to bed now. Be right with you, Homer. Is he tucking him in? Oh, he just needs help taking those off. Good night, son. Good night, Pop. Thanks. It's not that big of a deal. Wilma would love to do that for you. What you got there? Our supper. Oh, we're going to Jackie's hot spot. I phoned and made a reservation. We're eating at home. Are you sick or something? No, dear. Broke. Where did it go to? We spent it, babe. Well, why couldn't you get a job? Have you really been trying? They all tell me I don't know anything. They say I want to spend a couple of years as an apprentice. Are you really all right? I mean, in your mind. You talk in your sleep, honey. Sometimes you shout, something's on fire, and you want somebody to get out. And you keep saying Godowski. Godowski. Oh. They got it over Berlin. Can't you get those things out of your system? Come on, step out of it. It's not that easy, honey. Well, I'm hungry. I'm going out by myself. You're going to stay right here and eat what I cook and like it. For richer, for poorer, for better, for worse, remember? Uh, that escalated quickly. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Latham. Mr. Morning. VP? That's a Mr. Novak waiting over there. He's applying for a GI loan. Sir Thomas Novak, I see you were in the Navy. Yes, I was, in the Sea Beast. I see you have quite a family, a wife and four children. There's been more if I hadn't been away three years. And now you want to buy a farm. Forty acres, out near Anton Corners. What about collateral? You see, the point is, I haven't got any property. That's why I want the loan. That makes sense to me, Mr. Stevenson, but I get it. I'm a good farmer, Mr. Stevenson. Before the war, I was a sharecropper, like my father before me. Now I feel I'd like to have a little piece of my own to work. I believe in him. Come on, Al. Excuse me. Homer, old buddy, old pal. So this is where you work. Look at it, Al. 200 leaves of cabbage. That's what I get every month from old Mr. Whiskers from now on. You sure we haven't shortchanged you? Say, Al, did you know Fred Derry had a job at the Midway Drug Store? He introduced me to his wife. Yeah? Some dish. Yeah? We'll all have to get together butchers one of these days. Oh, that's where I'm going now. <laughs> See you later. Huh? So long, Homer. As I was saying, Mr. Novak, there is an element of risk involved, but uh, you'll get your loan. You look like a good risk to me. Me too. It's a happy day. Dexter. Ooh. Now don't play with those toys, please, bud. My name ain't Bud. Oh, seduction. How much is that? It's not expensive. It's sixteen fifty, but it's a nice size. <sighs> but it's a good, safe bet. Uh, just what do you mean by that? Well, it's a perfume that fits any mood. All right, I'll take it. Mommy, mommy, look! Thank you. I'm uh, very sorry. Oh, hello. Peggy. It's against the rules here to chat with customers unless it's a sale. That's a complexion cream. But you don't need any of that phony stuff. 
Oh, why are they so cute together? I have an hour off at one o'clock. Are you doing anything for lunch? Why, no. I'll meet you outside in 20 minutes. Should I be concerned? What else did you think you wouldn't do when you were overseas? Well, I never had any clear ideas, but there were two things I was sure of. One, that I knew I'd never go back to that drugstore. What were the other things? I think I was going to have my own home. Just a nice little house with my wife and me. That's the cockeyed kind of dream you have when you're overseas. You don't have to be overseas to have dreams like that. Yeah. You can get crazy ideas right here at home. This is making me want apple pie. Well? That shouldn't have happened, but I guess it had to. I don't know what to think or feel. Uh, we were discussing this loan to this man, uh, Novak. Yes, I approved it. But the man has no collateral, no security. In the army, I've had to be with men when they were stripped of everything in the way of property except what they carried around with them and inside. I tell you, this man, Novak, is okay. He's going to make it back, Mr. Novak is, tenfold for you. We have every desire to extend a helping hand to returning veterans, but we must all remember, this is not our money we're doling out. It belongs to our depositors. We can't gamble with it. I'll remember, Mr. Milton. Hmm. We're going out to dinner at the Embassy Club. Don't worry, it won't cost us a nickel. We got invited. Who invited us? Miss Peggy Stevenson. Well, call her up and tell her we can't go. Oh. Who is this Peggy Stevenson? I just don't like to be accepting handouts when we're broke. You better get used to it, because I don't see how we're going to get much fun on your thirty-two fifty a week. Things seem a little rocky here. You'll probably have to make a speech. It's my plan to meet that situation by getting well plastered. Peggy's going out dancing with Woody Merrill. Are his intentions honorable? I doubt. <laughs> I think she's crazy about it. Who, Meryl? No, Fred. Just a hunch. But my hunches are pretty good. I was just asking Peggy about Fred's wife. I know what you're both thinking. You're afraid I may be in love with Fred. <gasps> are you in love with him? Yes. Oh, Peggy. That's why I asked him and his wife to go out with us this evening. Once I get to know her, I'm sure I'll stop being silly about the whole thing. Oh, I want to hug her, too. Why am I cheering for Peggy? He's married. Ladies and gentlemen, we greet our friend, our co-worker, our hero, Al Stevenson. Speech, speech, speech. One day in Okinawa, a major comes up to me and he says, Stevenson, you see that hill? You and your platoon will attack said hill and take it. So I said to him, I'm sorry, Major. No collateral, no hill. So we didn't take the hill, and we lost the war. Oh, boy. I say that our bank is alive. It's generous. And we're going to have such a line of customers seeking and getting small loans that people will think we're gambling with the depositor's money. And we will be. We'll be gambling on the future of this country. Did he pull through? Was that good in the end? <laughs> that is quite the sardine dancing. So did Fred come? He did. Oh, I can't understand it. Why are you not mad about me? I think I'm attractive. Oh, good line, Woody. You know, all marriages don't have to be like that one. Your friends, Fred and Marie, they just don't like each other. Uh-oh. Why did you do this, Peggy? Is because she gonna tell him the truth? To prove to myself that what happened this afternoon? It was just this afternoon? But it did happen. If we go on seeing each other, Peggy, it'll happen again. Oh my gosh. Do you know that while Fred was away, I was drawing over $500 a month? I mean, from his army pay and the job I had. Now the two of us got to live on what Fred gets from being a drugstore cowboy. thirty-two fifty a week. Fred isn't going to be satisfied with that job at the drugstore. He'll get something better. Sure, maybe in five years he'll be drawing down 40 or 50 bucks. You can't have happy marriages on that kind of dough. <sighs> if you don't mind a personal suggestion, you could use a little more makeup. And I think you could get yourself a better hairdo. Okay. You'll get Woody and live happily ever after. It's in the bag. Uh, I don't like her anymore. Mr. Milton certainly acted enthusiastic about your speech. Sure, that's how he acted, the old hypocrite. He'll back me up wholeheartedly. Till the next time I give a loan to some little guy. Then I'll have to fight it out all over again. Yes? Well, what's she like? Spoiled. Vain. I'm going to break that marriage up. I can't stand it seeing Fred tied to a woman he doesn't love. Are you sure he doesn't love her? Of course I am. I'm going to break that marriage up. Is Fred in love with you? Yes. When we were saying goodbye, he took me in his arms and kissed me, and, and I knew. She's very open with her parents. So you're going to break this marriage up? You're going to do it with an axe? Oh, boy. You've forgotten what it's like to be in love. Peggy didn't mean that, did you, darling? No. Oh, this is so hard. Hello, Fred. Al here. Back there waiting for you. Oh, Dad's going to have a talking to. Are you in love with Peggy? Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is juicy. Your wife. 
What about her? Is that any of your business? That's what Peggy says. She volunteered some information to her mother and me. It may seem kind of corny and mid-Victorian, but we tell each other things. I love it. What do we do now? Step out and settle this thing in the alley? No. Guys, we're friends. I don't like the idea of you sneaking around corners to see Peggy. Give you a fair warning, I'm going to do everything I can to keep her away from you. I won't see her anymore. Well, call her up and tell her so. That satisfy you? Yeah. Okay, chum. So long. I'm so torn, because I kind of wanted him to say, how about I divorce my wife, and then I'll see Peggy. Oh, are you all set, kid? I'm ready when you are. One, two, three. <laughs> I am impressed, Homer, old pal. Said it wouldn't be fair to his wife for us to see each other anymore because I'm obviously the kind of girl that takes these things too seriously. He didn't have to say that. Hello, Homer. Hi, Fred. How have you been? Say, Fred, what happened, Butchers? You and Al, was there any trouble? Oh, no, we were just having a little friendly chat. What will yours be, Homer? Give me a chocolate sundae. You mind if I ask you a personal question? How did I get these hooks and how do they work? Well, I'll tell you. I got sick and tired of that old pair of hands I had. <laughs> terrible when you see a guy like you that had to sacrifice himself and for what and for what i don't get you mister we let ourselves get sold down the river what are you talking about we fought the wrong people that's all uh you better pay your check brother and go home pay the cashier right over there every soda jerk in this country's got an idea he's somebody speaking of jerks so we're all a bunch of suckers eh so we should have been on the side of the japs and the nazis eh i've seen a ship go down and over 400 of my shipmates went with it were those guys suckers that's the unpleasant truth. If I only had my hands. Take your hands over there. <gasps> Don't say it, chum. The customer's always right, so I'm fired. But this customer wasn't right. I'll meet you outside in a minute, kid. <gasps> What's that guy thinking? Hey, do me a favor, Homer. Go see Wilma now. Ask her to marry you, then marry her. Oh, what's Fred gonna do now? Take his advice, Homer. No! Go see Wilma! Go to her. Wilma, what are you doing out this hour night? I've got to talk to you. All right, come in. My family want me to go away. Up to Silver Lake at my Aunt Vera's place. Why? But I don't want to go. Homer, you're killing me! You see, the reason they want me to go is so that I'll forget about you. Maybe that's a good idea, Wilma. <gasps> I'm gonna punch you, Homer. You don't know what it'd be like to have to live with me. But I can only find out by trying. Let her love you. I'm going upstairs to bed. I want you to come up and see for yourself. I've learned how to take this harness off. I can wiggle into my pajama top, but I can't button them up. I'll do that, Homer. Let her love you. You can't put them on again without calling to somebody for help. That door should blow shut. I can't open it and get out of this room. Who's dependent as a baby that doesn't know how to get anything except cry for it. Well, now you know, Wilma. I guess you don't know what to say. I know what to say, Homer. I love you, and I'm never going to leave you. He was pushing her away because he thought she was only with him out of loyalty. Good night, Wilma. You better step on it or your husband will be home. He's job, honey. You won't come home for another hour. How do you do? Who are you? Cliff Scully. He's an old friend of mine. Get out. Go on, Cliff. I can handle this. Wait for me downstairs. <gasps> He's asked me out and I'm going to go out with him. I've given you every chance to make something yourself. I gave up the best years of my life. And what have you done? You flopped. <gasps> I'm going to get a divorce. Don't keep Cliff waiting. What are you going to do? Going away. As far away from Boone City as I can get. That's a good idea. What a jerk. There are drugstores everywhere. <gasps> you forgot these, huh? Just a lot of fancy words that don't mean anything. You can throw them away. Well, we'll treasure them, my boy. I think you're doing the right thing, son. How do you know it'll be different anyplace else? You're all right, Pop. But I know when it's time to bail out. So long, Pop. Wait. We've got two flights going out of here tonight. One eastbound, one westbound. Which one leaves first? Eastbound, 8 o'clock. I'll just hang around the field until then. Wait, Fred. At least go say goodbye. Despite intense pain, Captain Derry crawled back to his bomb site and released his bombs with great accuracy. 
the heroism, devotion to duty, professional oh skill, reflect highest credit upon himself and the armed forces of the United States of America. He needs to put that on a resume. Oh, Fred. Are they just taking them apart for parts now? Hey, you! What are you doing in that airplane? Oh, Fred, I'm so worried about him. I used to work in one of those. Reviving old memories, huh? Maybe getting some of them out of my system. Well, you can take your last look at these crates. We're breaking them up. We're using this material for building prefabricated houses. You don't need any help, do you? Hey, Gus, see if you think this guy can be of any use to us. Thanks. Now, children, let's remember the words. The bride will come down those stairs. <gasps> it's the wedding. I just got full body goosebumps. Oh, at their home. I love that. Hello, Al. Hello, Butch. Good to see you. Thank you. How are you doing, Steve? How do you do? Oh, she's looking for him. Here's the ring. Don't lose it. No, he's looking for her. So romantic. It's at a wedding. Oh, she looks so pretty. Hello, Fred. Nice to see you again. Hello, Peggy. Nice to see you. Dad told me he heard you were in some kind of building work. I'm really in the junk business, an occupation for which many people feel I'm well qualified by temperament and training. It's fascinating work. Where's Homer? Wilma's ready. I'll get him. <laughs> Wait, what did he mean by that? I love every character in this. I love Butch. I love Wilma. I love Al. I love Peggy and, and Millie. I love Luella. <sighs> the sweetest thing ever. Homer, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? I will. Wilma, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? I will. I, Homer, take thee, Wilma, to my wedded wife, who happen to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer. Look at them looking at each other. They're picturing it. Oh my gosh. To love and to cherish till death us do part. The ring. Place it on the fourth finger of Wilma's left hand. Oh my gosh. He steadies her hand. I pronounce that they are man and wife. You may kiss the bride. You know what it'll be, don't you, Peggy? It may take us years to get anywhere. We'll have no money, no decent place to live. We'll have to work, get kicked around. <laughs> Oh, that was so sweet. Oh, it was so sweet. It was like one of the original multiple stories in one, I feel like. It was long, it was pretty long, but you needed to see their arcs and the characters develop. I loved how it showed three different perspectives and each of them had their own problems. Fred sees Al's life. Oh, he it must he must be have a perfect life, you know. He's got this nice apartment, but he's dealing with inner demons too. You know, you watched Homer and he pretends that it's not a big deal and he makes jokes about it, but then like deep down you can see that he's pushing Wilma away because he doesn't want her to be stuck with him. But then in the end he like learns to love himself and she learns to love him and oh in the end, they are all just really sweet guys trying their best, and they all did get their happy ending though, which I'm so happy about. I got a wedding. You know how much I love when a movie ends in a wedding. And then, of course, during the speech, they're making eyes at each other, and they're picturing it, and they're feeling it, and then he kisses her. <gasps> oh, it was really sweet. Thank you so much for suggesting that. Have a wonderful night.